Hey everybody, welcome back. We are going to continue on with our study of object-oriented programming. We're going to probably continue on with that for quite a while. Um, but we are going to move into something that's near and dear to my heart, design patterns. And so when I'm talking about design patterns, I'm talking about this book right here. Design patterns. This is the classic book written by a group of authors known as the Gang of Four. So anytime you hear somebody talk about design patterns, you hear somebody say Gang of Four or GOF. They are referring to this book right here, all right? However, I'm gonna say, like, I love this book, but it's like a reference book. It is, no, it's a tough one to learn from. Uh, sometimes I joke, I just have it on my desk because I feel like it, like it makes me look smarter. Um, learning design patterns, the two I recommend, Head First Design Patterns, this is a fantastic book. Um, really gives great, easy to understand examples. And it uses Java, so you have a very Apex-like syntax. And this one I also think is an absolute gem. Everybody should own these books, is Apex Design Patterns. So now you've got all of your examples given in the Apex programming language with examples closer to probably what you'll actually encounter in your day-to-day -day programming challenges. Because I found like, as you mean, as, as my own career progresses and I, you know, and I interview more developers, that design patterns are not as used as commonly in Apex as I think they should be. So I'm going to pitch, everybody should learn these. They give you a common vocabulary with developers from other systems. So when you say this was an abstract factory or a singleton or a decorator, everybody kind of knows what you're trying to achieve. So for the next few videos, we are going to be talking about uh, creation patterns and specifically factory patterns. So we're actually going to do three videos just dealing with factory patterns. The first one is, I'm going to call it a simple factory. And head first, I agree, they say it's not truly a design pattern. And they're right, it's not in the Gang of Four book. But it's, it's simple, it's useful, and it's good for everyone to know. So we're going to do that one first. And we're going to continue on with the pizza store example that you saw me use in the last video where we talked about programming to an interface and not an implementation. And now we're just going to move that uh, the creation of our objects off to someplace else. So let's actually talk about when we see a creational pattern, um, what is that? So I'm just going to read right out of the text, right? Creation design patterns abstract the instantiation process, and they help make a system independent of how, of how its objects are created, composed, and represented. So we want to remember, we have our we had our pizza store that sells pizzas, and we want to make the pizza store independent of how pizzas are built and created. So over the next few videos, we are going to explore how we would do that in Apex, right? So, all right, let's get uh, IntelliJ and Illuminated Cloud going here. And I pre-built a little bit of the code for us today. This would be too much to watch me code along with all this, and there's a fair amount of boilerplate. But I'll put it all on GitHub, and I'll put the links into the comments, into the description later. So we have got, if you remember, we have this abstract class, and I changed it up a little bit. We have an abstract pizza class, and it's got these properties, name, dough, sauce, toppings, and it's got some methods. So every pizza inherits a prepare, bake, cut, and box, right? And Again, just because I want to give credit where credit is due, this example taken straight out of the Head First Design Patterns book. And then we have a few subclasses, right? Because if you remember, right, we cannot, you cannot directly instantiate an abstract class. It can only be instantiated through one of its subclasses. So we would have, say, a clam pizza, right? And extends pizza. That means, so that gives us inheritance, right? It's going to inherit all of those pizza properties and methods. So we have got, what do we have, a cheese? So let's set up our cheese pizza, all right? So we're going to say name equals, oh, cheese pizza. And we'll say dough equals regular crust. And Sauce equals, we'll say, what? Marinara, sauce, and we'll give it some toppings. Dot add. Mozzarella. 
I don't realize I don't actually know how to spell mozzarella. <laughs> oh, jeez, but IntelliJ will probably will probably be kind enough to tell me, right? Won't you? Won't you, IntelliJ? Yeah, you'll tell me. And we'll say dot add. And you know what? We're gonna put feta cheese. That sounds awful, but we're gonna put feta. We're gonna put feta cheese on it because because why not? It's just a pizza made of zeros and ones anyway. Nobody's ever going to eat this. All right, so we've got some some pizza subclasses set up. So we need a pizza store, right? We've got to have something that sells these. So let's create a new class, new Apex class called Pizza Store. Yep, go ahead, add it to Git. And in our pizza store, if you remember in the last video, we had a it had like a property up here of you know. Pizza, pizza, and we would set that in the constructor. We are going to get that out here. So now we're going to just give it a public method. Public, and it's a, it's going to return a pizza. We're going to call you know, we're going to call it order pizza. Call your pizza, call your pizza story order pizza, and we're going to give it a parameter of type, like you know what kind of what kind of pizza you're going to order, and then we are going to. We are going, so instead of instantiating it in here, we are going to pass this off to our simple pizza factory. So for right now, I am just going to switch classes to the simple fact, simple pizza factory. All right, so you can see I set this up a little bit ahead of time. And what we're gonna do in our simple pizza factory, I'm going to give it a, again, a, a public static method this time. Uh, Usually that's how I do these simple factories. Um, I don't do a, you know, factory equals new simple pizza factory. I just throw a static method in there, generally with a switch statement. So let's do that. Again, we're going to give it a string parameter of type. What kind of pizza is it going to return? And we are going to public set. Oh, well, yeah, that's for all right, because I didn't actually name my method. I'm like, what's wrong there? I uh, will call it create pizza. There we go. And we're going to say, I'm just going to do pizza. Pizza, just right up here, we're just going to set it to null, so we always have a pizza. And, and then we are going to switch on type. And we're just going to do a couple of these in here, but we'll say when... When cheese, all right. Pizza equals new cheese pizza. All right. And we'll say you know when clam equals new clam pizza. All right. So you can see how this is going to go. We'll do uh, one more. If you want to, obviously, like, you know, feel free to pause and build all of these out. But to try to keep the length of the video from going nuts, I am just going to, uh, we'll do one more, right? When pepperoni. Pizza equals new pepperoni pizza. All right, there we go. So we have our simple factory method set up, right? We got to give it a, we got to give it a return. I'm saying that's yelling at me going, hey, you said this method returns a pizza, but right now, return pizza. Okay. So there's not much going on here, right? This is pretty straightforward. Create pizza method, takes a string of, it's called type, switches on type, and you know, when it's cheese, creates a new cheese pizza, and the static method then returns a pizza of that type to the caller, right? To the client. So we need a, go back to our, let's go back to our pizza store. Okay. So we're going to say uh, in our order pizza method, we're going to, you know, we're going to do a, we're going to say pizza. Oop, no, that's not, not a pepperoni pizza. And say pizza pizza equals 
simple pizza factory dot create pizza and type. All right, so now that switch statement, that simple feature should return to our order pizza method the type of pizza. So if we, you know, up here and we say we pass in order pizza cheese, right? The factory should then create and return a cheese pizza for us. So then in our pizza store, all we have to do is pizza dot, what do we need to do? Pizza dot prepare. So remember, remember inheritance, right? Every single pizza is going to inherit those methods from us. They're all subclasses of our abstract pizza class, right? So they're going to inherit all of those methods. Pizza, pizza dot bake. Pizza dot cut. And pizza dot box. All right. And then we're going to say return and let's try to compile everything. And we got an issue. Something did not compile. Dependent class is invalid. Invalid type pepperoni pizza. So let's something is off in our probably have something out of sync here. All right, I think we're good. I think that fixed it. No? Does not exist or void. So let's see if we can solve this. Method does not exist from the simple pizza factory. Is it because we did not, do we need to recompile our simple factory class? Invalid type. Well, none of these should be invalid types. I think what happens is I just got out of sync. I was redoing, recreating some of this stuff before I started the video. Invalid type, clam pizza. Let's go back to our pizza factory. And it also says pepperoni is an invalid type. Let's try to recompile. Back to our factory. Okay, I think we are good. Let's go back to our pizza store. And also, I think we are all set. Awesome. Sorry about that, everybody, if you're watching me fix that. Uh, and let's, uh, anonymous Apex, right? And then we're going to, so we are going to say, I'm going to do a pizza store, store equals new pizza store all right and then if i say store dot order pizza in fact what i'm going to do i'm even going to assign let's because we remember we can just do because that returns a pizza 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 equals store dot order pizza cheese and just to double check that we have everything I'm going to call that display method that I put in there earlier. All right, and let's run this and see what we get. Debug only. There we go. So you can see that now we totally abstracted that away out of the pizza class. So if we changed our type to, to, cl to clam, Awesome, right? So you could see that is all we have to do. All we could do, you know, what if we wanted to order two pizza? We'll pizza dot clam pizza. And all right, we could do clam pizza dot display. And if we wanted to do, maybe we want to order a cheese pizza too, right? And we'll say, Remember, we're using polymorphism now, so any of these things can be assigned to our pizza superclass. Cheese pizza equals store dot order pizza. Cheese. Run it again. And there we go. We made a clam pizza and we made a cheese pizza. It's awesome. I love object-oriented programming. So let's 
review real quickly. All right, so we have an abstract class pizza. Has some methods and has some properties and everything, all the subclasses, right, are going to use inheritance. So then we have our subclasses, cheese pizza. Cheese pizza extends pizza, so it inherits. And we are just going to set all those properties in the cheese pizza constructor. And we do the same thing with every other one of our subclasses. Then we have our pizza store class, and it has a order pizza method. It takes a string type parameter, and then it calls the simple pizza factory, which has a static method of create pizza. So now, right, with remember our call stack, we have called simple pizza factory. And it, we're going to go into that switch statement here. We're going to switch on the type. If it was cheese, right, it's just going to create a new cheese pizza and send it back to the pizza store for us. Which will then, all right, where's my pizza store? There you go. It's going to return that type of pizza. So there we go. Simple factory. Uh, and so we've removed the instantiation of our pizzas out of the pizza store, giving ourselves a little more flexibility. Hope this was useful. So, and we're going to build on this in the next video where we're going to do a true um, factory method class, a true design pattern. So we'll have different kinds of pizza stores that prepare pizzas in different ways. And we're going to keep building on this. We're going to do some cool stuff. Um, I really think you're going to like it. Hope you're excited. Uh, if you are, please thumbs up. Give me a like. Let me know in the comments. And I'll see everybody in the next video. Take care.